In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between linear velocity, vector force, and assembly linear velocity. All three of them have uses that will make your coding a lot cleaner and a lot easier if you know what to use them for. So linear velocity, when applied to an object like a ball, right, which is going to do a simple ball, you're going to get something moving at the same studs per second, right? The velocity is not changing. It hits the ramp, more pressure is put on the ball, more force is put on the ball to maintain that velocity. Now, if we have vector force, and I use this all the time, I'm guilty of this. I use it for almost everything. You just put a force on something and notice that the ball keeps going faster and faster until it hits the ramp, right? Once it hits the ramp, the force of gravity starts to dampen the force on the ball, the, the vector force constraint, but it does make it to the top. I just set it up like that. And then finally, we have assembly linear velocity. This is great for knockbacks. You need an initial uh, velocity hitting your opponent or something like that. Boom. And then it starts to peter out, right? It starts to die. I turn these down so you can see them, right? But we can... We can go ahead and do a couple of them. Oh yeah, great for a pool game, great for knockback, great for things like that. And you can also put a torque vector on there too so that you get a torque action. The person can spin around in the air. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll make this ball thrower and we'll use the three different constraints, the vector force, the linear velocity, and the assembly linear velocity. That's actually on the part and see how this is done. All right, so I have an empty base plate right here. Let's start out with linear velocity. So I'm gonna get a part in my world and I got sphere selected. Go ahead and press that. We can rename this because we're gonna have three different parts, one with each type. We're gonna have linear velocity, vector force, and then assembly linear velocity. So this is gonna be ball underscore LV for linear velocity. All right, now we can change the size, color maybe, and yeah, give it a different color. Go down to the size, instead of four by four by four, maybe 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5. All right, and then on the ball LV, hit the plus, let's add a linear velocity constraint. There we go. And we're also gonna need an attachment. Hit the plus again, get an attachment. And just as convention, I usually call my attachment ATT zero if I'm going to attach it to some sort of constraint that has an attachment zero. There we go. So I have linear velocity selected, attachment zero. I'm going to select right here. Boom. Now we're good to go. We still have to do some settings though. And I'm going to set the actual vector velocity in code, right? And then get it moving and stuff in code. But I do want you to check relative to. We want to do things relative to the world, and then you could also do it relative to attachment zero. Don't do attachment one because we're not going to have one. And then you could switch it back and forth to try to see the differences. But let's do world, right? Make sure that's selected. All right, now let's get our ball LV. Let's move that down to server storage. We're going to clone it when we need it. All right, what else? Let's get Avatar, Rig Builder, R15 or R6. It's not going to matter. We're going to add a rig to the world. This is going to be our ball thrower, right? Like some sort of robot. You can maybe make the balls flaming or something like that. That's all right. We're just going to get it moving today. So in my rig, I'm going to add the script to actually clone the balls and then move them using our different types of uh, forces. Right, so let's hit the rig, and then we'll hit our plus. There we go, script, and let's call this ball thrower. Nice, and that should be big enough for you to see. So let's go ahead and clone our linear velocity ball and then put it in front of the rig. So I'm gonna need a variable for server storage. Game get service server storage because that's where the ball is and then we'll get a variable for the ball i'll just call it ball lv for ball linear velocity so we'll get server storage we'll do a wait for child and then we'll do our ball lv there it is 
we're going to need a variable for the character, for the rig, right? The rig's character. And that's just going to be script.parent because we put our script right on the rig. And we'll need the humanoid root part for the position and orientation of the rig. So we'll do wait for child. Humanoid root part. That looks good. Let's make a function local function. We'll call this linear velocity ball. If I could spell it. There we go. All right. We'll do a, a variable for the cloned ball. I'll just call this ball. So I could do a lot of co copying and pasting when I'm doing my other forces. We'll get our ball LV, clone it. And then we got to put it into workspace, right? We're going to use the ball, not the ball LV. This is the clone. And we'll say the parent equals workspace. Let's go ahead and position our ball right in front of the character. So I'm going to say ball dot C frame equals HRP C frame. But we don't want it right into humanoid root part. We don't want it right in our character. So let's go ahead and multiply by a C frame dot new, this is going to move the ball. We don't want to move it to the right or left. That's the X. We do want to move it up a little bit, maybe higher. I want to anyway. And you'd think that negative three would move the ball behind the character. It doesn't. It moves them in front. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to do a wait five seconds. And then I'm going to call the linear ball velocity. See what happens. Hit the play. And it's a pop into view. Nice. So it's just sitting there, right? Because our vector velocity on the linear velocity constraint is set to zero. So it's just hanging there. That's pretty cool. What happens if we rotate the rig? Is it going to still be in front? Because we did that multiplying by the C frame new. That's kind of crazy, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Right? Maybe move them. Let's move them on the other side of the of the x axes on our world. See what happens. Make sure that ball's still in front. Boom. Nice. All right. Now let's get some movement on that ball. So let's go to our ball thrower, which is on the rig, rig ball thrower. And we'll get the linear velocity that's on the ball. Right, so we'll make a variable for it. We'll call it like LVEL. How about that? That's not a one, that's an L. LVEL ball dot linear velocity. I didn't set the, I don't know if I set my max force enough. So let's go ahead and do that. Max force, we'll make that equal to math.huge. There we go. And that's the max force required to maintain our linear velocity, our constant linear velocity. So I just made it big. And then we'll get our LVEL. And we have to do our vector velocity. We want them to move out from the humanoid root part. So I'll say HRP, C frame, look vector. Now that is of magnitude one. So if you just leave that like that, it's going to move away from the character one stud per second. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit faster, right? And after a certain amount of time, let's do some cleanup. Let's get our game.debris service. We'll do a add item. We'll get the ball. And then we'll set it to a time to live. Uh, let's make a variable for that. So I'll say TTL, time to live set that variable up here. We use the same TTL for all the balls. TTL, set it to 10. All right, let's make a little uh, for loop here so we can spew out a few of them. So let's do 4i equals 1 to 5 and steps of 1. Do. Uh, wait a second in between each ball. Grab our linear, linear velocity ball. Control X, Control C. There we go. Let's play it. And here it goes. One, two, three, four, five. Looking good. Nice and smooth. 
All right, let's go ahead and make our vector force so we can we can compare them. Let's go down to our server storage. We have a ball LV. Let's just do a control D to duplicate it. And we'll keep the LV, but we'll add a vector force ball. Let's change the color though so we don't get confused. So instead of bright blue, I'll just make it like green or something like that. Open up the ball VF. Get rid of the linear velocity. Ball VF, vector force. And we need a vector force, right? There we go, vector force. Now on that vector force, we're going to go down, look for attachment zero, right? Notice I let that ATT zero in there. Go ahead and select it. Cool. Now we have this apply at center of mass. That is really convenient for assemblies. That's parts that are connected by welds or joints, like a character, right? But we're just using a ball, but I'll set it anyway. We have a force already pre-selected. I'm just going to zero it out because I'm going to set it with code. Notice the relative to, I got that at attachment zero. I am going to change that to world. All right, let's go back to our script. Ball thrower. And we need to get a reference to our ball VF. I'll just do a copy and paste, right? So I just copied that line above. And then we'll make this a VF, vector force. VF, make sure it's in there. Yep, VF and server storage. Maybe we'll copy this, save some time. Maybe save some time, right? Control C, Control V. It's complaining because we already got something called that, right? This is going to be vector force ball. All right, so we need our vector force right here, VF. We'll clone the vector force ball. We'll still call that ball. Right, C frame is good. We want it the same place. Oh, look at this. LV. Let's change this to vector force. And on the ball, we now have a vector force. Cool. And we're not going to need a, a max force for this, right? We're applying the force. But let's change this to VF. And instead of vector velocity, we have a force, right? So the force is still going to, we're still going to use this for the direction of the force. But force is mass times acceleration. So we'll get our V, uh, we want our ball. We'll get the mass, get mass. And then let's multiply that by like 20. All right, I'll make this a little bigger. Now it's not going to match, right? Because uh, velocity and acceleration are different things. Acceleration is a change in, in velocity. So you can figure out the physics and stuff, see if you can get something comparable, or you can just do like, uh, maybe I'll try that, right? That's what most of us do, is uh, just try numbers that kind of work. All right, so that looks good. We need to call this, this vector force ball. Let's just go ahead and copy this for loop, control C, control V, vector force ball. Let's play it. And there we go. So we're going to have our linear velocity balls coming out first. One, two, three, four, five, and then boom. Look at that. And they're going to speed up. So they're going to go faster and faster. They'll even pass out the blue balls because the force is continually applied. When I do things like the knockback with vector force, I just have it live for like 0.2 seconds. But for that, we really shouldn't be using vector force even though I do. Maybe I'll do a new knockback video. Let's go ahead and do a control D on our ball vector force. And I'll call this ball 
linear uh, assembly velocity. Oh, what is it? Linear assembly linear velocity. I'm sorry. Assembly linear velocity. And we do not need any constraints, right? Because if you look at your ball, you're going to have an assembly linear velocity down here. Oh, I got to make this big again, right? And then we're going to change this number. And if you wanted to spin around, like you hit a character in a knockback, you'll do your assembly angular velocity. I think I called that a torque vector. That's what we used to call it, right? With the old body movers. But we're going to we're going to be changing this one today. So let's go back to a rig, ball thrower, open that up. I get rid of that space. There we go. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to get a new ball. Oh, we need to change the color too, right? Let's get a new ball first. One thing at a time. And let's take a look at what was called assembly linear velocity. So ALV. Good. Let's call that ALV. Come on down here. Control C. Control V. Let's call this assembly. Oh man, is that right? Assembly linear velocity ball. You don't have to make the names that big, right? I'm just doing it for a demo. And then we, the one we're going to clone is going to be the uh, what's that? Assembly linear velocity. That one right there. And this is all good. We are not going to need a reference to anything. This is actually pretty good. What I think I'm going to do is get my ball dot assembly linear velocity. And I'll move this to a new line so we can see it. And then I'll just multiply it by the same. So this is going to apply an initial velocity right away. And then it's going to stop. Right. And we can clean up our ball. We should change the color of that ball though. So we can see it. What do we got? We had a blue. We have a green. Should we make this one? How about yellow? Let's try it. Oh, uh, we got to do our for loop though. We have to call that. Come down here. Control C. Control V, assembly linear velocity. All right, now we're going to get all three balls. We're going to be able to see the differences. There's the blue. That is the uh, linear velocity, linear velocity constraint. Ah, there's the vector force speeding up, passing out those blue balls. And then we got the yellow ones. They're just kind of slowing down. I mean, base plate's pretty smooth, so it's going to slow slowly. That's why I had the ramp there in the demo. Anyway, that's pretty cool. We could do cool stuff with all three of those.